Thank y'all for tuning back into your channel, Pelican Bay K9's Dog Talking News. Giving it to you fair and unbiased, like I always do. Some gonna like it, some ain't. You know, some ain't gonna like it, like I always tell you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you ain't subscribed yet. Let it tally up. Let them numbers tally up, man. Appreciate y'all for hitting that like button on the last video. But don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here today. Matter of fact, go ahead and hit that like button right now so you won't forget. You know what I'm saying? Right now so you won't forget. Um, don't forget to get up in them comments. And I appreciate y'all brother's uh, opinions on the uh, little puppy. I appreciate it. appreciate it. Let's get into that dog news for the day. All right. Today we're going to start that news off by saying... One man's trash, another man's treasure. You know what I'm saying? When I say that, I say many of you, a lot of you, if not all of you, have been in a spot where one man's trash, where you felt like one person maybe wanted to call a dog, one person maybe wanted to sell a dog, or get rid of a particular dog, and he didn't just didn't see what you saw in that dog. You know what I'm saying? He didn't see what you saw in it. Plenty of my dog brothers and sisters out there can say they done went to somebody's house and or either been around somebody, you know, when they was trying to get rid of a dog and they was just talking all kind of trash about the dog, down on the dog, saying this, saying that. But once they got their hands on the dog, you know, things change. Things change for the dog. You know what I'm saying? The dog can feel the good spirit himself. You know what I'm saying? Just somebody loving him. You know what I'm saying? He gonna act different. You know, uh, you know, uh, one man trash is another man's treasure. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we gonna get to this story right here. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Let's get to it. Dog heard day after day crying out and unable to defend itself. And now the dog's owner is under arrest, accused of animal abuse. But that's not all. KTVU investigative reporter Brooks Jarreau is live here in studio. And Brooks, we understand the neighbors initially came to the rescue here. Yeah, not only did they call animal control, investigators say the neighbors repeatedly captured evidence of animal abuse on camera. In many cases, the pit bull was beaten with a stick or a crowbar. I'm told it's so graphic we can't even show it on TV. He is a bundle of energy. He wants to crawl in your lap and listen to you. His name is Turbo, a rescued one-year-old pit bull mix. A dog Contra Costa Animal Services says was severely abused. And then you can see bruising up around his ears here. Hold up. Now I'm going to stop this one real quick. Now, just looking at that dog right there, you know what I'm saying? Just looking at that dog, as soon as the video start out, I already know what all y'all brothers said as soon as you look at Even if you don't deal with them kind of dogs. Even if you don't deal with them kind of dogs. One man trash, another man's treasure. You know what I'm saying? Hey, now, I don't know what happened. All I know is what they say on the video. What they say on the video is, got a whole bunch of camera footage of him beating the dog. Picking the dog, choking the dog, slapping the dog. Uh, beating the dog so horrific that they can't show it on TV. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what he was doing, you know what I'm saying? But just looking at that dog right there, I can see that dog right there uh, make a pretty penny in the right hand. You know what I'm saying? Make a pretty penny in the right hand, you know? But the worst thing they can do for that dog, to my opinion, is to neuter him. If he go to some type of uh, shelter or something, liable to be neutered by the time he's adopted out. To me, that's the worst thing they can do to that dog. You know, they're going to take the dog, going to start looking the whole different way and within another year or so. He ain't going to look like that no more. You know, he'll look a whole different way. But uh, get back to the video. The calls began Monday from Montoya Garden Apartments in San Pablo. Claims of a continual problem playing out on a balcony. The animal was beaten and housed poorly. Um, in a cramped area. A tenant said he witnessed Turbo being beaten and thrown, blood found in the hallway and on the stairs. But it was the sounds that investigators say caught the attention of those who live here. Screaming of the animal and the noise of the actual beating. 
A neighbor captured the cruelty on camera in graphic detail several times. In one video, the dog's owner held him in the air while beating Turbo with a stick all over the body while the dog cried out, unable to get away or defend itself. The feeling of just horror. Seeing any animal beaten is a horrible experience. All right, stop you again, stop you again. All right, we heard what happened. You know what I'm saying? We seen, you know, the nice how nice the dog looked. We heard what the dog been through, but y'all ain't heard shit yet. Y'all ain't heard shit. <laughs> Listen here, man. Listen here, man. In the midst of doing all that, in the midst of doing all that, this brother had this. After getting a search warrant and help from San Pablo police, Turbo was taken Tuesday night. But that's not all. Police uncovered packaged marijuana, guns, ammunition, and a large amount of cash. The weapons that we, we found were, were high capacity uh, assault rifle, uh, shotgun, a uh, Glock pistol, revolver, these are all very, very dangerous weapons. Melvin Broadway was arrested. He's faced felony firearms charges before. Now the 32-year-old is expected to be charged for weapons, drugs, and animal cruelty. He told <laughs> investigators he never hurt Turbo, who was like a son to him. But Turbo was found trapped in a crate, unable to move without food and water. It's heartbreaking, um, especially a dog like Turbo, who is just a very sweet pup. Turbo's being treated for his trauma, including cuts, swelling, and bruising. He will recover from those. He seems to have a very resilient personality, and so that is quite encouraging. Given the doctor's dosing of medicine, lots of treats, and love. Now, right now, the district attorney is reviewing this case. Broadway remains in the Contra Costa County Jail. Turbo is staying at the shelter, but after this case moves forward, Animal Services hopes to find him a safe home in the community. Mike? Turbo needs a safe home. And you know, Brooks, right now, there are people watching that report. They're home, and they're picking up a phone. They want, yeah. they probably want to adopt Turbo. Can, can people reach out right now and, and offer their house and, and their love? for the dog? Not yet. This still has to work its way through the courts, but Animal Services says if and when Turbo can be adopted, they'll make that information public, and of course, we'll let everyone know as well. All right, Brooks Drew is live here in studio. Brooks, thank you for that. Next, we're talking about culling, or if you don't want a dog, just go give it to somebody, take it to a shelter. There's plenty of people out there who are willing to be a good pet owner to, you know, a pit bull if you don't want it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want it, don't just leave it straight. Don't let it run loose and just say forget about it. Don't take it around the corner, drop it off. Don't do none of that. Uh, give it to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Or take it to the shelter. One or the other. You know, worst come to worst, take it to the shelter. But if you can find somebody to give it to, you ain't got to sell everything. Give give some some people, oh, I ain't giving nobody nothing with no papers or this and that. Man, listen, man. To me, this is my opinion. Once it ain't, Once I don't want it no more, I can care less about the papers. I can care less about the dog. Have I have the papers? Have the dog? Have everything? I don't want the dog no more. You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep the papers. What I'm gonna keep the papers for? That just put me in a position to do some puppy peddling later on down the line. You know what I'm saying? No, take the papers with you, man. Take the papers with you. I don't care the dog papers, everything, man. Let it go. But if you don't want it, you know, like I say, give it to somebody. Don't do like this guy. Don't do like this guy, man. No dog news for the day. PDK9 dog news for the day. I'm going to give it to you, man. Y'all go ahead and hit that like button up. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to drop down in the comments. You know? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Donate to the channel if you want to donate to the channel. Um, but don't. If you if you want to get rid of your dog, don't do like this guy here. 30, we have breaking news of an arrest in a dog dumping case. Assignment editor Mike Rogers is at the desk now. And Mike, you just confirmed this information. Tell us what happened. Hi, Pat and Jeff. Yeah, so I just hung up the phone with Riverside County Animal Services, uh, and they told me they made an arrest. We showed this video to you last week. We'll show it to you again right now. This happened in okay. Winchester earlier in December. This is a man who threw his dog over this barbed wire fence into a cell tower. Now, we paused it there so you don't have to see the dog be thrown. He then walked away and left the dog, all according to Riverside County Animal Services. Now, they identified him as Robert Ruiz Jr., and they sought a warrant for his arrest. And today, I can tell you that he is in custody. Uh, he's now being booked on felony animal cruelty, uh, which is a felony, willful abandonment of a dog, which is a misdemeanor. Now, uh, Riverside County Pets tells me 
They were able to get him at his home in the city of Winchester, which they had been to before. They'd been there several times before, but he wasn't there. His family said they didn't know where he was. Today, they persistently went back and they were able to locate him and they took him into custody without any other issues. Um, and I want to tell you as well that when they spoke to him, he said he thought he was doing the right thing. He said that he didn't want to take him to a shelter, so he thought leaving him there uh, would be the best option, which uh, clearly it wasn't. So we got more on this. Uh, Riverside County Animal Services is going to release video of that arrest. As soon as we have that, we'll bring it to you guys. Now, we got a breaking news alert. All right. For those who've been following, the, um, when I told y'all the, the, the people that lived in Texas had the pit bull, who, who got the three dogs that got loose and mauled the 81-year-old man, okay, you remember I gave you an update on the two people that was arrested, the, the, the owners of the dog, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, the owners of the dog. But now, now we got another update. It's still cracking over there, that neighborhood, man. It's still cracking over there, that neighborhood. We got the sister of the girl who was arrested. Okay, the boyfriend and the girlfriend was arrested. Well, we got the sister to that girl. gets arrested for threatening the neighbors. She told the neighbors she gonna die and her son gonna die. But I ain't said it like I see it. She said it. Let's get to the news. Members of the man and woman arrested for that deadly dog attack are speaking out. This following the arrest of a third person connected to the case charged with retaliation. A relative accused of threatening the lives of neighbors who spoke to police and the media. News 4 San Antonio's Jordan Elder live with the latest. Jordan. Robert, it's been two weeks since a man was mauled to death here on the city's southwest side. Neighbors who witnessed the attack tell us they felt helpless. Now, two weeks later, they say they feel helpless again as they face threats. Did it ever get to a point where you feared for your safety? Yes, yes, and for my family. Belinda Rodriguez lives near the spot where one man was killed and several people were injured in a dog attack. She says she reported the house where the dogs lived multiple times. Her neighbor is the victim named in the arrest affidavits for Destiny Marie Cardona. Police say Cardona is the sister of Abilene Schneider, who co-owned the dogs involved in this attack. The alleged victim says Cardona and others told her, quote, you are going to pay for this and, quote, we are going to kill your son, bring him to you, find you and kill you. She called me yesterday and she felt, you know, relieved. Some relief, she says, but she says now we're waiting to see what happens next. Rodriguez says she's been threatened too. Egging of the house, toilet paper, fireworks, uh, name calling. Police are now investigating those incidents. Attorney Robert Jimenez says retaliation cases happen often. They're classified as a third degree felony. And a third degree felony is punishable by anywhere from uh, two years in the Texas Department of Corrections up to a maximum of 10 years. State lawmakers are already considering how to make reports for these situations more private to prevent retaliation. District 5 officials say they won't be commenting on the ongoing investigation. A spokesperson says in an email, quote, any help that state legislators can give us in order to streamline and protect individuals throughout the reporting process is greatly appreciated. For now, neighbors are still on edge. And I don't know when these people are going to come out or what's going to happen. As you can see, even though some of these neighbors are being threatened, they're not backing down. They tell me they want to see real change come from this situation. Reporting live, I'm Jordan Elder, News 4 San Antonio. Now, sometimes, you know, because I'm quite sure that brother in that situation, I'm quite sure he probably, you know, feels some type of sympathy or some type of something. And he knows, you know, the seriousness of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Some, sometimes you have to tell them outsiders, this is just mind their business. This is shut up. They keep their mouth closed sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because see, she done escalated that situation to a whole other situation more than what he wanted to be in because she want to run her mouth and got herself involved in something. And got herself involved in something. But yeah, I'm just letting y'all see what kind of dog news going on around the country tonight. PBK9 is giving it to you fair and unbiased, uncut and raw. I ain't finished with you yet. I ain't finished with you yet. All right. Now this one, I need a little tree huggers at. Where them tree huggers at, man? 
Where them tree huggers at? You know, we need them tree huggers out for this one. I got one for y'all tree huggers, man. I got y'all some scum, man. I've been searching around. I found y'all some scum. Y'all want to talk trash about somebody. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to talk trash about somebody. You know? You got some bad people out here. And then you got these kind of people. You know what I'm saying? You got good people. You got bad people. And then you got these kind of people. Alexandria police have arrested an Alexandria man for forcing a pit bull to have oral sex with him. That dog was chained behind a home in the 700 block of Willow Glen Road. Last night, the department started to get numerous reports of a video circulating on social media on Facebook that showed a man sexually abusing a dog. The video was posted by someone who witnessed the act and filmed from a vehicle across the street. Police identified and arrested 23-year-old Noah Tomlin of Alexandria. They charged him with sexual abuse of an animal. Tomlin was booked just before midnight, and he posted a $1,000 bond this afternoon. News Channel 5 learned the owner of the dog was notified and contacted by the Humane Society of Louisiana. The Humane Society tells us they offered to pay for a veterinary exam and said they will help the owner protect the dog in the future. And here's a statement from the Humane Society of Louisiana's director. It says, we are grateful to the person who filmed this horrible crime and the work our volunteer investigators and the Alexandria Police Department for their roles in identifying the suspect and making a swift arrest. And while rare, these crimes need to be dealt with harshly to deter future similar, similar criminal activity. Yeah, man, like I always say, I ain't gonna keep y'all here too long. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for dropping in. Hit that subscribe button before you get up out of here. If you haven't yet, don't forget to hit it, man. A lot of y'all be watching the videos and they ain't even subscribe. Won't subscribe, just watch the videos and even if you like them, sometimes you still don't subscribe. Man, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button before you get up out of here and drop down in them comments like y'all brothers and sisters always do. Stay safe, stay legal out there. PBK9s, giving it to you fair and advice like I always do. And I'm out.